Philippians chapter number 3, of course, in the first couple of three verses, it gives us a warning. It just talks about uh, being warned of, of dogs, and that mean, don't mean literal dogs. That's what we call the Gentile dogs and the evil workers, and uh, be aware, be on guard. And uh, it's a sad thing, but in our day, we have to be on guard. Amen. Uh, in fact, the Bible talks about, I think it's in Revelation, that... Uh, Satan has a seat among us. He comes in and sits among us sometimes, but we don't know. Uh, he has people that come in and sits among us and causes trouble if they can. And so he talks about, just gives us a beware. Then verse 4 through 6, he talks about uh, his qualifications. Verse 4 said, That I might also have confidence in the flesh. If any man think that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. Uh, circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, the Hebrew, the Hebrews is touching the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, torching the, the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. Here he talks about his qualifications. He said, if, if anybody's got any right to brag, I do. He said, all the things that I went through and, and all the education. Paul was a well, well educated man. And uh, he said, if anybody had a right to, to brag, it's me. And then you come to verse 7, and, and he says, But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. In other words, he said, Everything that I've accomplished, everything that I am, is nothing but loss. <clears throat> and he said, yet doubtless, I, yet doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ. Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. Do count them but dung that I may win Christ. Being found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through faith of Christ. The righteous which is of God by faith. Paul, what Paul said is, what I am is nothing. I count it as dung, waste. Uh, all the efforts, all the person I am, the ability that I have, he said, I count it nothing. You know, sometimes we learn we ain't nothing. Uh, there's nothing wrong with education. There's nothing wrong with bettering yourself. But it, when it really comes to it, it's all Christ. Amen? Amen? In Him we live and move and have our being. Amen. It's not what the world don't need to see who we are, what we are. And I hate to say this, but sometimes I wish some preachers would learn that. <laughs> it's not about them. Amen? Amen? It's not about their ministry. One fellow asked me one time, said, what about your ministry? I said, I don't have a ministry. I said, everything's God's. That's, that's His it's his work. It's his ministry. And uh, sometimes we put, we, we got ourselves out there too much. Paul said, I ain't nothing. I'm nothing. And he said, I count all loss for Christ. And then you, you come to verse 10 through verse 14. And these are very powerful verses of Scripture here. And Paul says in verse 10, that I may know him yes. and the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death, if by any means... I might attain, attain, attain unto the righteous of the, of the resurrection of the dead, not as though I've already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ. What Paul's saying is, is he said, I'm nothing, and I, I've not arrived, I've not attained, I've not, uh, I've not hit the peak, I've not hit the top, but I'm still working on it, still driving. You know, uh, uh, I told you this before, but I had a young preacher ask me one time. He said, Preacher, when, and I'd preached about 40 years at that time, and he said, Preacher, when you get to that place, you can level off. <laughs> when you get to that place, you know, I guess you got it. You don't have to study and do all that stuff no more. I said, Well, I don't know. I, I said, 40 years, and I ain't got there yet. I said, My daddy's over there, and daddy preached uh, close to 60 years in. I said, Go ask him. He went over there and asked daddy the same thing. Daddy said, Son, I've been preaching about 60 years, and I ain't got there yet. In fact, he said, I probably won't never get there. But you know, there's no place you level out. You can always strive for more and accomplish in the Lord. No retiring in the work of God. You're always pressing. You're always learning more, growing more. And he didn't say grow to a certain place. Uh, I'm 72 years old, and believe it or not, Slick, I still learn stuff. <laughs> Amen? There's still stuff that I'm learning. And, and sometimes I read after somebody else. And I'll be reading along, and I'll think, man, why didn't I see that? You know, and, and uh, in fact, I heard a young preacher a while back preach. And he's just a young guy, and he got up to preach. And uh, he came across something, and I thought, man, 
this is the first time he ever preached. And he come across something, and I thought, man, I never saw that. I never seen that like he brought it out. What I'm trying to say is we're, you're always learning. Right. Paul said, I, I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. There's a lot of Baptists think they are, but they're not. But he said, I'm not perfect. But he said, verse 13, brethren, I do count myself to not count not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do, again, those things which are behind, reaching forth, and of those things which are before, I press. That means I push. I put an effort toward the mark of the prize, the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. What Paul's saying is, and Paul's one of the greatest men of the Bible. And uh, can you imagine what it'd be like if 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 we didn't have the Pauline epistles? <laughs> if we imagine, you know, what we did, we, we we wouldn't have half of what God is wanting us to say or to say to us as the church age. Amen. And Paul delivered, and most of the things that Paul said, he was, it was in prison when he wrote it. Yeah. Uh, he wasn't in the limelight; he was in prison, and he wrote these sayings. But there's one phrase that I want to pull out for a few minutes and talk about it. And uh, he said in verse number ten. Paul said that I may know him. Amen. That I may know him. Paul said my one desire and one goal is that I may know him. Of course he goes on and talks about how he wants to know him. In the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his suffering, being made conformal unto his death. Uh, I don't know about you, I want to know him. But I don't know if I want to go through all he went through. He said the fellowship of his suffering. I don't know if I want to suffer like Christ suffered or not. Uh, I don't think we'll ever be able to suffer like Christ suffered, but uh, I wouldn't want to go with that just to know Him. But Paul said, "I want to know Him. I want to know Him." But if you know somebody, you know you've got you've got to go through sometimes what they go through. Amen. You don't know how to you don't know how to sympathize with somebody if you've never been there. Uh, I picked up a, a, I put this on the internet. You might have said it. I said if you really want to know the love of Christ, go to supper and sit with your Judas. Amen. Christ had Judas, one is going to betray him, sat with him at supper. Fed him anyway. Yeah. Amen. Good. Washed his feet. They washed all the disciples' feet. And if you really want to love the love, love, love of Christ, let your Judas come. Invite your Judas, that person you don't like. Invite them over to your house and sit down and have supper. That'll work on your love. Amen. And so he talks about that I may know him. And he, he didn't say I, that I want to know about him. You know, sometimes we say, well, uh, uh, do you know so-and-so? Yeah, I know. And uh, But we don't know. We just know of them. Uh, it's just like President Biden or whoever. You know, you say, you know him? Yeah, I know him. We don't know him. We just know about him. We know what the news tells us. We know what the world speaks of him. We don't, we don't really know him. Amen? And he didn't say, I want to know about We know about him. We know about all about different presidents, different people, movie stars, whatever. Else. We know about them, but we really don't know them. And uh, he didn't say, "I won't know of him." I won't know of him. But sometimes people say, this "Preacher, you know so and so." Well, I say, "I know of him." You know, I've heard about him. I know of him. I know some things about him. I know he pastors a church over in so and so or or something, but I don't really know him. I don't really know who he is. But Paul didn't say I want to know about him or of him. He said I want to know him. And I'm afraid sometimes our <clears throat> some of our problems is we just know about God, Amen. but we really don't know God. Amen. Amen. We know about him. We've heard about him. And I remember I remember uh, J. Vernon McGee was on the radio and he's still on there. Uh, he's dead, but his, his tapes played. But uh, I used to like to listen at him. And uh, and in my mind. In my mind, I had what he looked like. In my mind, you know, he had that voice. And, and I had a picture of him, what he looked like. And then when I really saw him, he don't look, he look, look, look nothing. I had him like a little bony fella, you know. Uh, and he come out, and, and I thought, you know, he's a man, he got that voice, you know. And he'd come out and speak. And I had him as a man, little fella, tough, rough, you know. He'd come out heavy, sissy looking. <laughs> Amen. You ever, you ever seen him? <laughs> His voice didn't even match who he was. I was shocked. You know, I remember the first time uh, Brother Roloff. I'd heard about Brother Lester Roloff for years. Listened at him radio. Heard about it. My dad preached with him, but he come preached a meeting in my dad's church, and he stayed in our home. 
and he come in, he looked nothing like I thought he looked. <laughs> and on the radio, if you heard him preach, he come across like mean as a devil, you know, just rah, everything. But when he come to our home, stay in our home, he's the most one kindest, loving, compassionate man you ever met. Only problem I had, Brother Roloff, every time he come, he brought a juicer and a big sack of carrots, had all us on carrot juice all week. Had to clean you out in a hurry, amen. <laughs> I'm telling you, every time he come, he bring that old carrot juice. We'd beg mother, let us go spend a week with somebody else. <laughs> but he was one of the kindest men that you ever met. But he come across different. Amen. But once you learn him and know him, it even made his preaching better. It made being around him better because you know him. Amen. Sometimes that's the way it is in church. We know people. We know them by name. Amen. Some of y'all been here coming for here for years. Some of y'all think you know me, but you don't know me because you ain't never been around. Amen. You ain't never. You ain't never took me out to eat. You ain't never had no time with me. That's a hint. <laughs> But uh, you know we don't know each other. We know, you know, oh, there's Brother Bob, you know. But we don't know each other. No. I remember years ago when I was pastor, we had a couple's retreat. And I've probably told you this too. But we had a couple's retreat, and we had uh, about 15, 16 couples with and uh, And I always brought a lesson every, every uh, evening. I'd bring a lesson. <clears throat> and that, that year, I couldn't really get nothing on my heart to teach. And uh, that bothers me sometimes, but sometimes it don't bother me because I know when it comes time, the Lord's going to have something. And then we'll forget the Lord spoke to my heart and said, just let everybody tell when they got saved. And so when we came and, and we all gathered around in, in the place was at, and I said, tonight what we're going to do is we're going to let everybody tell when, when they got saved. And I told when I got saved, and then Kate told when she got saved, and we started around. And one of the ladies came up by me, and she said, Brother Mike said, and her husband's name is Robert, and uh, she said, when it gets to Robert, said, he won't say nothing. So said, just help me just kind of, Overlook and bypass, you know, and go on, you know. And I said, well, whatever. And uh, But when he come his turn, he just stood up. <laughs> started talking about when he got saved and blowed her mind. But what I was saying is we all told about when we got saved, where we got saved. Some got saved in the car. Some got saved at church. Some got saved in the bedroom. Some got saved different places. And uh, and you know what? When From that point, when we walked away, when we looked at that person, we didn't look at them as just saved. We looked at them and said, they got saved in the bedroom. They got saved in the car. And when they'd stand up and testify, I'm glad I'm saved, your mind click. Got saved, so and so. You know what? We become to know them in a way we didn't know them. You know? And so so Paul says that I may know him. And I wrote three or four thoughts down. I thought about, first of all, if you're going to know him, you've got to be introduced to it. Amen? You've got to be introduced to him if you're going to know him. Uh, there's people that, that that you know, you see them, and uh, uh, I've had people say, you know so-and-so, and I say, no, they say, well, let me come introduce you to them. And they introduce me to them, and from that point, I become more aware of them. I begin to talk to them, fellowship with them. And, and But I, but you can just look at somebody. You know, I could look at Brother Bob and say, hey, you know, I like to know him. You know, I, you know him? No, I don't really know him. Let me introduce you to him. Well, that opens up a door. It opens up a door for us uh, to become more. Amen? You know what I'm saying? Sure. And that's the way it is for Christ. You'll never know Christ until you get introduced to Him. <laughs> and when you get introduced to Him, you accept that introduction. And, and in fact, it's, if you explain it, when you get saved, Christ comes and lives in your heart. And you've been in, introduced to Christ, then you may know Him. There's a lot of people out here in this world that's never been introduced to Christ. They don't know Him. They don't know who God is. Amen. They've got a concept of who God is but they don't really know who God is because they've never been introduced to Him. Amen? It's kind of like dating, James. I don't know how you and your, your good wife got together. I don't know my business, but ever how you got together, I'm glad you did. But you probably, you know, probably, you may have seen her. said, man, I like, you know. Here's what we got, us guys is. We don't, we don't look how educated they are. We just look how good they look. Amen? <laughs> Come on now. And we look at her and say, boy, she's pretty. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what, pretty is not always good characteristic, amen. And they say, boy, that's pretty. I'd like to meet her. And somebody says, well, I know her. I introduced her to her. Some of you may have your wife because somebody introduced you to them or your husband. Sure. Amen. You may have a wife or husband because somebody introduced you to them. And, and you become aware of them. 
And you know what? You'll never know Christ till you come introduced to him. Paul rejected Christ. Paul was a abuser of the church. He hated Christ like everybody else did. But one day on the book of in the book of Acts, he got introduced yes. to Christ. Good. And when he got introduced to Christ and accepted him, guess what? He saw Christ in a different way. Amen. He saw Christ in a different way. And from that up, that point on, you know what? Paul had a desire to know him. Know more about him. Amen. Uh, when you get introduced to somebody, you know what? You want to learn more about them. About them. You want to learn more. You want to get past that introduction. You want to know more and more and more. And that's what Paul said. I think about the Samaritan woman in John chapter 4. She got introduced to Christ. And she looked in a different direction. But when she got introduced to Christ, you know what she said? Come see a man which told me all things. Is this not the Christ? Amen. And her whole life has changed. Her attitude has changed. She began to know Christ as who he really was so and I say this very sincerely you'll never know Christ until you get saved you'll never know who God is until you get saved you can't you don't know them until you really get born again by the grace of God the natural th natural man understands not the things of God the lost man don't understand God you ever, you ever talk to somebody that's lost and tell them, try to tell them about the goodness of God tell them about what God done for you Tell them how God pray, answered your prayer and worked all this out. And you try to tell them, they just don't look at it. Uh, I'll give you an illustration. We we uh, we went up to, uh, before Christmas, we went up to Newport, Tennessee, to uh, to put some flowers on her mom and dad's grave. And every once in a while, we get up a load of stuff to take to, to uh, Crossroads. Uh, canned food, stuff like that. And we take a load over there. And we hadn't done it in a while because, number one, we didn't really have, have the money. Number two, uh, uh, the places we called because of all this COVID, a lot of places we get stuff like that, they didn't have it. I'd call them. I said, you got any gallon canned food? No, we ain't got none, preacher. And anyway, we're sitting in Newport. There's, there's a place called Bargain Barn where we get a lot of stuff. And while we was there, had no intentions of going. And while we was there, I said, let's run my Bargain Barn just to see. We went in there, and they had gallon cans of beans, and gallon cans of whole potatoes, and gallon cans of corn. And I went crazy. And I, I told Kate, I said, man, I got all this stuff. We're broke. <laughs> I said, I, when I say broke, I'm talking about we got a little account we set back. Somebody give, hands us a little money, we throw it in that account. We use that to buy the stuff across the road. Sure. And I said, our fund's low because the last one we'd got, we just about broke it out. And, and I told that lady, I said, it's on Tuesday. I said, if you'll sell me that, I'll pick it up Thursday. And Kate looked at me. I said, I'm buying this load by faith. I said, we're just going to trust the Lord. He'll take care of this. I said, if I don't buy this, it's going to get gone. And so we bought it and put it on the credit card. And I told her, I said, well, we'll just trust the Lord for this. Pray about this. And, and that was on Tuesday. I was supposed to pick it up on Thursday. And Wednesday night is paid for. <laughs> the Lord set it all in. Every bit is paid for. And a little extra come in on the next load. Amen. 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 And uh, you, you say, why? Well, because when you know God. You can put faith in Him, trust in Him. Amen. If you don't know Him, you know, you learn more about Him. You learn more that you can trust Him. Not, and the more you know about somebody. But so you've got to be introduced to Him. Then the second thing about it is not only you must be introduced to Him, but you must spend time with Him. If you're going to know God, you've got to spend time with God. Just an introduction won't do. Amen. Uh, Brittany here, I could somebody can introduce me to us. I like to know her. I like to hear her sing. And I, you know, maybe she sang a song. I said, I like to know her. And somebody, Slick, comes up and said, Hey, let me introduce you to, to Brittany. And she introduced me to Brittany. And you know what? I introduced She introduced me. I know. I know who she is. All that stuff. But I don't really know her. Amen. And all I know is she gets up and sings a song, goes back and sits down. That's all I know. But you know what? If we go out and eat, and me and her and Kate and her husband just get it, we go out and eat her. We get around, we fellowship, we laugh and talk. You know what? The more time you spend with them, the more you learn them the more you know about them. Amen. Sometimes people look like they're just sincere, but when you get to hanging out with them, they're crazy. Yeah. I'm one of them kind of people. Amen. And I come in church, I'm kind of serious, but when I get out of here, I'm crazy. Amen. Amen. And like the fellowship and have a good time. Yeah. You begin to learn. No, You know what you do? You spend time with them. The two on the road to mess in Luke chapter 24. You remember what they said? They were sad. They know Christ. They know about Christ. They know he was 
possibly the Redeemer. And they're walking alongside. Jesus showed up. They didn't know him. They didn't know who he was. And he talked to him, why are you sad? And he's walking along with them, fellowship with them, talking with them. Then he preached, he opened up the scriptures, preached about himself. You know what they said when they got through? Did not our hearts burn within us? And they ran back to Simon and said, hey, we've seen him. He fellowship with us. He talked to us. He is the Messiah. You know why? Spend a little time with him. And if you're going to know Christ, you've got, you've got to spend time with him. Amen. The disciples in John chapter 12 is the same way. Did you know when, when all that is over with and everything, and the crucifixion and everything, they didn't really understand. In fact, in one portion it said they still didn't know. But when he showed up that day in uh, John chapter 12, when they shut up for fear of the Jews, and he showed up and he manifested them to them, and he talked to them and fellowship with them and showed them his hands and showed them his side. You know what? He spent a little time with them, and they realized who he really was, what he really was. You know, if you're gonna if you're gonna know God, you've got to spend time with Him. You got to spend time in this book. You got to spend time in prayer. And you know this: this Bible is God speaking to you. But prayer is you speaking to God. And as we pray, as we read the Word of God, we're fellowship and communion with back Him. And the more you study about Him, the more you talk to Him, the more you know Him. Amen. Case, uh, we've been married fifty years, and she told me the other day. I said something, I don't mean what we're talking about, something. And I said, Well, how do you know? She said, Oh, I know you. I said, Oh, you know me. She said, Fifty years, I know you. She said, I know how you think. I said, That ain't good. She said, I know you. I know what you're gonna do. I know how you're gonna act. I know how you're gonna respond. Amen. My boy said something back. I said, Don't tell your mama, buddy, she'll be on your case. And he said, be on my case. I said, yeah, I know you, mama. <laughs> I said, she'll be on your case. You know what? Through the years, talking, we begin to know. It's like, it's like when you meet somebody. It's written in, I can't never think his name. What's your name? Buford? Okay, Buford and Brittany here. When they first met, they didn't, they didn't know each other. I mean, they met each other. But you know what? They started dating. When they started dating, you know, they're around everybody else. Then when they start dating, they get off by themselves. You know what to do? You start talking. You go out and eat. You talk. And fellowship. You talk. And you begin to learn more about each other. And the more you learn, the more you fall in love with each other. They didn't just say, this is Brittany. Oh, I love her. <laughs> and some people claim that, but I don't know about that. Uh, you know, it's just on that introduction, you didn't really, you know, just say, well, go home and say, well, I found her. <laughs> you know, uh, that may happen for some people, but it, it don't, most people it don't. But you know what? Because they begin to talk and fellowship and open up. And they begin to laugh and learn each other. Uh, they, the more they learned about each other, the more they loved each other. And the more they knowed about each other. You know how? They spent time together. Amen. You've got to spend time. If you're going to know him, sure. you've got to spend time with him. Then let me say thirdly, and I, I push on. I thought about David. I thought about David in the, in, the, in the backside of nowhere taking care of sheep. You know where David learned about God? <laughs> he spent time with him back there in the wilderness taking care of sheep. Did you know most of the psalms that David wrote, he wrote as a shepherd out in the, in the, the wilderness, out in the, the grasslands, in the mountain areas, taught fellowship with the Lord, taking care of their sheep. He wrote most of the psalms as a shepherdhood boy. You know why? Back in the old, he spent time with them. Amen. He's the one that said, the Lord is my yes. shepherd. He, he got that psalm back by himself. Just him, the Lord, and them sheep. And David was a very wise man with all these sons. Where did he learn all that? He knowed him. The more he learned about him, the more he wrote about him. Amen. Amen. And so you got to spend time with him. Then I'll say something else. You you got to be intimate with him. Yes. Got to be intimate with him. John John twenty one. If you remember, there's five times in the Word of God that it mentions in the book of John. There's five times that it's mentioned that John, the disciple whom Jesus loved. And about all them times, John has got his head laid over on the bosom of the Son of God. Only disciple that I know that laid his head on the bosom of the Son of God. Five times it's mentioned the disciple Jesus loved. I preached on that. Doug says it's his favorite message that I preached. But, but five times it's mentioned John, the disciple whom Jesus loved. It didn't say whom loved Jesus, but whom Jesus loved. 
And when the disciples would gather together, even at the Lord's Supper, when the disciples would gather together, guess where John was? Everybody else in there isn't eating. Amen. Amen. And questioning the Lord. John's up here at the table with his head laid over the bosom of the Son of God, listening to the heartbeat of God. God's got his arms around John's head. You know what? They're having an intimate relationship together. And, there, and John, and then if you remember in John chapter 21 and uh, verses number 7, when the disciples were in that storm and Jesus come walking on the water, and it says they knew not, the disciples knew not it was Jesus. In verse 5 it says, Jesus said, Children, have you any meat? And he said, Cast the nets on the right side, and they did. And therefore the disciple whom Jesus loved said, It's the Lord. In the midst of that storm, in the midst of all the chaos going on, when, G, when John heard his voice, he said, it's the Lord. <laughs> you know why? He'd been laying on his bosom, Brother Slick, and that voice had been going out over that ear. He's in close, intimate relationship, and that voice, and he heard that voice so many times when he spoke. Uh, he said, it's the Lord. It's the Lord. Uh, I remember when I was in the hospital, I had a heart attack back when I was 32 or 3. I was in the hospital, and Kate come see me. And I'd be sitting there and I had a nurse that stayed in there with me all the time, watched all the machines and stuff. And every time I'd say, my wife's coming. And that's all, preacher. I'd say, yeah, she's coming. And it wouldn't be just a minute or two she'd come walking in the door. And they tried to fool me. They tried to fool me. It got, it got to be a game. And they'd have somebody come walking down through there. The nurse say, here comes your wife. I'd say, I don't hear her. And then when she'd go, they'd send her down the hall, I'd say, yeah, there she comes. She had a, she, she's she got a little clip plop that nobody else ain't got. Worse now since she had all them surgeries, but she had. And you know what, Slick, I never missed it. I never missed it one time. Never missed it one time. I know her, I know her steps. I know her voice. I know her voice. Called home one time and phoning. And uh, uh, that's back when you had to call through, collect, you know, and all that stuff. We didn't have cell phones. Y'all blessed with this stuff. But years ago, you know, we had to call collect. And the other one on the phone, they had a choice to accept it or not accept it. If she was mad at you, she didn't accept it. If she was happy, she did, you know. But I called home, and the lady answered the phone. I said, that ain't her. And the lady said, I'm sorry, you know, maybe a bad connection. She called again, and she answered. I said, that's her. You know why I know her voice? You know why I know her voice? I'd spend intimate time with her. Sure. Fellowship with her. And you've got, even if you go over to the book of the Song of Solomon, you go to the book of the Song of Solomon, you know what? The Song of Solomon, <laughs> little Shumite woman and Solomon, they had such a relationship with each other. That's why they, they, they called each other, you know, the, the, the sweetness of sugar is running off her lips and... And her hair is golden, you know. They and, he, and she'd turn around and talk about boy, he's, you know, he's an old <laughs> shepherd guy, and, and talk about how pretty he was and how handsome he was and the touch. And you know why they done that? Because they, they had an intimate relationship with him. And I'm not talking about an ugly relationship. I'm not talking about necessarily a sexual relationship. I'm just talking about an intimate, a close time of fellowship one with another. Amen. See, the more you hold your wife's hands, the more you know it's her. Amen. Well, some of you are against that, you know, you're afraid to hold your wife's hand. Come on now, help me out. Huh? And uh, and we know. I mean, just just I can talk about me and Kay. We know. I know her I know her uh what am I looking for, Mama? Her uh sometimes her some of her abilities and don't abilities. People don't notice it, but she has a hard time stepping up on the curb. And so when we go places, even though I, I walk faster than she does. I don't know why I don't just slow down, but I walk faster. But I, when I get to the curb, you know what I do? I just stand there and wait because I know she's going to have to. She'll grab my arm and step up on the curb. When we come out of the store, she has my arm step down off the curb. It's just an automatic thing for me to stop because I know, I know she's going to have a hard time. Get the steps, she has a hard time to step. So I wait on her. Amen? And uh, she has a hard time carrying stuff and trying to walk. She has enough trouble walking. I'm not putting down. That's just the way it is. That's just where we're at. She has a hard time walking, much less carrying stuff. So when we go to the motel, I just pull up the front door, go in, check in, hand her a key. I said, go on, get up there and play on your iPad, do whatever you want to do. I'll unload this truck. 
You know, because I know her. I know her limitations. She knows mine. She knows some things that I can do, can't do. And and you know what? That comes through years of intimate time, spending time, fellowship. You know what? Some people's been married for years and still don't know each other. Amen. Some people's got always got to have somebody else around. Amen. And it's good to have people around. I like having people around. I'm a people person. I like to have I like to have people around. My boys is the same way. They always want people around. We we had to keep people in our house all the time. And when the boys were growing up, it wasn't nothing for us to have five, six extra boys at the house. I'm not talking about for a day or two. I'm talking about for a week. We'd get up in the middle of the night and go to the bathroom and be three of them laying in the living room floor. We didn't even know they was there. <laughs> but we like people. We like fellowship and being around people. We like that. And, but you know what? There's sometimes I don't want nobody around. Amen? Amen. And uh, we, we was going to eat somewhere here a while back, and my son said, let me talk to Heather, and uh, we might go with you. I said, no. <laughs> I said, me and your mom was going out. I said, we ain't inviting the crowd. I done that one time, Brittany. You ain't going to believe it. Don't ever try this. I invited, uh, I invited my, my, who was Lexi, I guess, was going to go eat with us. And she, she made the phone call and said something to her dad, said, I'm going to eat with Papa. Well, next thing, they're going. And then the next thing I know, my brother was coming to and he called and said, what are y'all doing? I said, we're fixing to go over to Lower City and eat. He said, well, I'm near to the Lower X City exit, and he showed up. And then my other son come. Cost me near two hundred dollars to feed that crowd. It started out. It started about a thirty or forty mil. You say you're crazy. No, the next thing I know, everybody was there, and there wasn't nothing wrong. We had a good time. But you know, sometimes I just won't go with her. Uh, y'all, y'all think we're mean or something. But sometimes, you know, I say, "Honey, I'm gonna take you out to eat tonight." And then I'll say, "If the boys call, don't tell them." <laughs> You'll get there, Brittany. <laughs> yeah, I said, don't call, don't tell them, because we'll have to pay for theirs and and put up with them. And saw you be throwing food all over us, and we won't even be able to sit together, you know. And then sometimes we'll call them. I said, call the boys see if they want to go eat. But there's times we will just want to be together, sure. talk, fellowship together. So you got to you got to have got to be intimate intimate relationship. So to know him, to know him, you got to be introduced to him. You got to spend time with him. You got to be in it with him. Then, then the last thing, you must be involved with him. If you'll know him, you got to get involved with him. Uh, Mary Magdalene in, in John chapter number twenty. You remember, she's the one that said, "My Lord." You know, she didn't recognize him, but when he spoke to her, he spoke. He didn't. He didn't say, you know, these characteristics. All he did is said, "Mary." She knew him. You know why she'd been involved with him. If you go back, if you go back in the Bible. She's the one who had seven devils, and God cast it out of her. And she realized what He had done for her. And if you if you go on, she was a follower of the Lord, and and everything. And so her involvement with Him down through the days when He spoke, she knowed Him. Boy, you know when if you really want to know the Lord, get involved with Him. <laughs> you know, I was thinking about this the other day. This is a simple thought, but you ever think about this? People talk about David and the giant, and in that first chapter. Brother Bob, that first, the first of that chapter, it tells how big that giant was. It tells all about that giant, how big he was, how big his sword was, everything. David's, David's taking care of sheep on the backside of nowhere. But the Bible took, it took time to tell about all the size and the strength and all that about that giant. And then when you come on down and David shows up, the men, his brothers, know how big that giant. In fact, there's one statement that was said. They said, have you seen this man? David said, no. David had never seen this giant. He didn't know how big he was. Might have been, might have heard how big he was. It don't say he did. He didn't know how big he was. He didn't know how strong he was. David stripped of a lad. Here's a big old man. Man of war. David didn't know all that. He said, well, I'll go fight him. <laughs> I'll go fight him. And they said, well, you're just stepping of lad. He said, yeah, but said, I done whooped the bear. I done whooped the lion. David didn't know, all, didn't need to know about him. All he needed to know, how big God was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good. He said, I don't care what y'all tell me. 
He ain't nothing compared to God. How did he know how big God was? He'd been spending time with him. <laughs> he knowed who he was. He knowed what he was. Amen? And he knowed him. All he needed to know is God. He didn't know. You know what? In this world, the battles we face, we don't need to know all about the circumstances. All we just know God's greater than anything we go to. Anything we face. Any battle we're in. He's bigger. Amen? My God. You get down and you ain't got nothing. My God shall supply all your needs. Amen? Times you know we think. Well, I've given this illustration before, but right here we'll, just, we'll give this. I remember when, when me and Kay first started dating, uh, she didn't know. She, in fact, she wouldn't even say. She had made a confession in, a, in the First Baptist Church. Never know, she didn't make a confession. She just joined the church. She just come one Sunday. The, in, that, in the First Baptist Church back in, in Newport, She'd never heard a gospel message. Been there her whole life. Never heard a gospel message. Can you imagine that? First Baptist Church. Never heard a gospel message. They invited people to come and get saved, join the church. You know what they did? They come down, they handed her a car, and she signed the car like the rest of the young folks did. For she knows she was saved and going to heaven. All she does is sign that car. And uh, me and her met, and and uh, and I was already preaching when the men and her met. And that's about the only place we ever dated. Went to church. And she got under conviction. Daddy preached one day and preached the gospel, and she got under conviction and got saved. Didn't know nothing. I'm talking about zero about living for God. Nothing. Didn't know nothing about faith. Didn't know nothing about trusting God. And I'm not throwing off on her. She just didn't know nothing. She'd never been taught nothing. And we got married, and we started our life together. In fact, Brittany, you like this. Our, my great proposal. We sat out on the front porch about midnight one night at her mama's house. And I said, here's my purpose. I'm going to travel up. I'm a preacher. I'm going to travel up and down the road and preach the gospel. Do the work of the evangelist. If you want to get in on that, I'd be glad to have you. <laughs> Real super, wasn't it? She said, ah, that's what I want. And we got married. That's what we've been doing all these years. That was a real romantic, you know, proposal. But uh, it worked. That's right. You got it. It worked. Only well, mother must use them. might not have worked, you know, but it worked. But uh, but you know what? Down through the days, down through the days, we'd do God do that. We'd get play hard places. God, we'd pray and God would pull us out. We'd have prayer meeting tasks. We didn't have no money. We'd have prayer meeting tasks. Boys would come in there, little old boys, and then we'd get in and I'd say, "Hey, boys, share this with your families." I said, "Boys, we're broke. We got to have some help or this or that." We had to pray. God take care of it. And that we'll get years and years later. Uh, I was in evangelism, and uh, winter time come. It's about before Christmas, and but James, I didn't have. I about what about seven weeks I had, or something like that. I didn't have no word to preach. And uh, in December, back in those days, it's hard. And uh, and I will. I got down. I got down about that. And I thought, man, and I had a stack of bills. And I said, one day, and I thought, I told Kay, I said, I said, I don't know what we're gonna do. I said, got these stack of bills. I ain't got no meetings till after Christmas. I don't know what in the world we're going to do. And I'm standing here, Brittany. I'm standing in the kitchen like this, you know. I know a uh, preacher's supposed to be super spiritual, but sometimes behind the scene, y'all don't know us. <laughs> sometimes behind the scene, we're wringing our hands like you do. I said, I don't know what in the world we're going to do. I said, we ain't got nobody coming in. I said, I start preaching back in January and, and everything and, and all, and and I'll never forget, she never even, she never even showed no emotion. She just turned around and smiled. You know what she said? She said, we're going to do what we always done. We're just going to trust God. I said, shut up. Nobody nominated you to preach. Amen. <laughs> just hush. <laughs> you know what I know? Next thing I know, God began to move. Working out. You know what? She had learned that. Why? In our service for the Lord, she had seen how God took care of us. And God helped us. And she learned God's gone gone forsake us. You know, you know where you learned that? You learned that because you spend you spend time with the Lord. David in 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 in, in the book of Samuel, you remember when all that uh, zigzag was burned with fire and all that happened? Yeah, some of them rose up against him going to kill him. You know what the Bible said? David went and encouraged himself yes. in the Lord. Right. You know what he did? He just went off somewhere and him the Lord had a little intimate time together. Amen. Fellowship a little bit together. David probably laid his head over the bosom of the Lord. Fellowship to him, and he come out encouraged with himself and the Lord. 
You know why? He knowed him. And he went out and encouraged himself, spent some time with the Lord, fellowship with him. Let me ask you a question. Do you know him? Do you really know him? Do you know do do you uh do you want to know him? Amen. Do you want to know him? Uh, sometimes I go places and, and I've done this and have people do me. Had a fellow a while back was in the meeting, he came around and he said, Brother Goodson, I am so he introduced himself, he said, I am so glad to finally get to meet you. He said, I've heard a lot about you. I've heard about you. I've listened to your tapes, but I've never got to meet you. Never got to meet you. And we fellowshiped around. I, all week we fellowshiped around, had a little camp meeting thing, we fellowship. He'd come around and I'd say, Hey brother, just sit down over here and he'd sit down and eat with us and we we fellowship and laughed and carried on, had a big time. And uh, spent several times together just sitting at the table, fellowship, and going to church. He'd come up and we'd talk for church. You know what? During that week, we'd become more known to each other. At the end of the week, you know what he told one fellow? He said, I've always heard Brother Mike Grace. He said, he is, ain't he? <laughs> I thought, man, you didn't need to know that. You didn't need to learn that. But you know what? They learned that because the first of the week, he introduced himself. By the end of the week, we were laughing together, fellowship together, telling things about together. Learn a lot about each other. Amen? You know what? Paul said that I may know him. How well do you, do you know him? How, how, well, some people know him. They know him. They know of him. But how well do you know him? Amen? I'll give you, I'll give you another illustration. I'm through. Brother Doug. Brother Doug knows me. I have... I have issues, uh, military issues, and uh, a lot of things that I went through in Vietnam flash back on me, and I have problems with a lot of things. I have to work on it all the time. One thing is I don't like to sit and eat in a restaurant with my back to the door. I don't like that. And I don't like to get hemmed in. I got hemmed in in the booth one time up at the church. And they hemmed me in on purpose just to aggravate me. You don't want them round booths like that? They got me over in the middle. I sat there, before we got my food, I was done, you know. And I said, y'all going to let me out of here. They wouldn't let me out. Brother James, I just come up and crawl across the table, come out across the table. I said, I've got to come out of here. And that's just me. I didn't know, I can't help it. And Brother Doug, he knows me. He knows me. And he knows that's part of me. And we've we've been somewhere before, and and unbeknown to anybody else, he take care of me. We got to one in place one time, going to sit. You know what he said? He said, "Brother Mike, you just sit right over here." We went to some people's house one time, and where where we're standing and going to have prayer, I was going to have sit in a place I didn't really want to sit, but I'll I'll make it. When we got there praying, you know what Brother Doug said? He said, "Brother Mike, won't you sit right down here? Put me down on the end of the table." I looked at him, I said, you know why? He knows, he knows. We've been we've been together for years. He knows some of the habits that I have, things that I can't help. But you know what? I guess he loves me, Brother James. I guess he does, I don't know. He loves me enough, he, he kind of takes care of that. Boy, it's glad when you, <laughs> we'll have a spell here, when you know him. Sometimes he works things out for your good. You know why? He knows you. Amen. I want to know Him. I want to know Him. So when I get up every day and read and pray, try to study the book, I want to know Him. If you enjoyed today's broadcast, head on over to your app store and download the IBC Florence app today, where we have our music, sermons, videos, devotions, and much more. And as always, thanks for listening.